So, we'll go to Peter. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Great turnout tonight. Nice to see you all here. Okay, in the wonderful world of the internet and the Internet of Things specifically, we have little boards like this little Spark Fun thing. It's got Bluetooth, a 2.4 gigahertz radio, and it's based on an ARM processor. We also have things like the Arduino, the Nano, of course, STM32 board, another ARM computer. Uh, where are we done? This little one's got Wi Fi and Bluetooth on board, so great for IoT projects. This one's got an ARM processor, Wi Fi and Bluetooth. And what do they all have in common? Very little, as turns out. Some of them use ARM processors, some of them don't. So you end up using different IDEs with them, different source libraries, just about everything gets different. So when it comes to professional development, it's a little bit difficult. Then Google decided they would bring out Brillo, wonderful little project based on Android 7. Now, of course, it's got to the beta stage where they're putting more information up on the net. You can get their SDK previews, your downloads, and start playing with what we have it here. The Intel Edison, NXP Pico, and Raspberry Pi, all of which my company's been kind enough to give to me. I like my toys. But what makes these important and what makes Android things important is the fact that it's bringing standards where previously there's very few standards. If we go back to the old days of computing, when we had the VIC-20, the Commodore 64, and so on and so forth, it was hard to write for anything because you were trying to support everything. So DOS came along and the PC came along start forcing standards on everybody. In my view, Android Things is going to do something similar for Android uh, IoT. Right now we have numerous protocols across the board for smart homes, for example. But Android Things uses the Weave protocol, which is basically brought about by agreements with Nest and other companies. So it brings some standards. It means that we now have one API to communicate between your smart controllers in your home, whether it's your air conditioning, your overloaded refrigerator with a super processor in it, or whatever it may be. These machines can now communicate with each other. We can put a controller on the wall built by one company and have it interact with the air conditioning or ventilation systems, power curtains or whatever it may be in your home built by somebody else. Android Things brings this to us in a nice, easy to use format where we have standard API supported by a large company. We also have standard operating system where it differs from conventional development is Android Things is obviously EM toward it, embedded. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work to interface hardware devices, but not so much as we would have to do with the others. As if we take this Raspberry Pi 3, it comes with Ethernet connection, a USB ports and so on. Android supports them out of the box now. Uh, same with the other boards I have, the Intel Edison, for example. It's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on board. Depending on the options you go with the expansion boards, you can also get Ethernet. It's quite easy to use power over Ethernet with these things as well with a few adapters. And that becomes just a little bit easier for uh, development. Yes, they cost more but the costs are now coming down quite significantly on these high performance computers, which means for a lot of applications, it's justifiable, especially when you consider it reduces the cost of development. So that's why our company has decided to build air conditioners with Android things in there. Now I had hoped to show you Android things on this, but Google, you need to get things sorted 
it keeps crashing. <laughs> I've tried a few different cards, I've tried a few different images, but to be fair to Google, it is beta. So it's not something that's really ready for production yet. Of course, we should talk about some of the other differences. Traditionally, Android development is done with Java. Android Things has no Java. There's no Java virtual machine, so it's all C coding. So that means us old timers who like our old traditional compiled languages get another go. So, now what else can I tell you about it? It's given me grey hair. I've had to learn a lot of new things. <laughs> I would like if it gave me a lot more grey hair, but there's a lot less grey hair to go grey. <laughs> the joys of getting old, eh? So, any questions? Any questions, so Peter? No, no questions. So, just one question from me because I. I mean, I use an Android phone, I'm a loyal Android fan, and of course there's this, always this, I mean, I've got this old China phone, uh, which, um, not the Xiaomi one, but basically, you know, I don't get the latest Android updates. I mean, I don't expect a Googler to answer, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, whether with Android things, um, you know, we have this type of fragmentation issue there whereby you, don't exactly, you run, you run into issues with devices which don't exactly get the latest security updates. Any quick thoughts on that? Yes. Choose the platforms that Intel directly supports. That's why we choose them. Uh, it's got a longer life expectancy. If you're going with uh, something that's manufactured by third parties, then pretty much like the phone issue, you're saddled with their support for it. Sometimes it makes sense to pay that little bit extra and go with the big boys. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Okay.